Hello everyone, welcome to Yap Music Repair Shop, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be doing a repair on this guitar and it's suffering from this fairly common problem which I'm sure you've all had, there's no signal coming from the guitar and in this case we think that the culprit, the problem, is this, the jack socket, where the jack lead goes into your guitar. It's jack socket. And the reason we think this is causing the problem is because, if I can move my finger here, we can see that it's moving about. It's loose. And also it turns around, which means that there's a good chance that one of the cables in there has got snagged and broken. Tools. We're going to need some certain tools. Now, if the cable is broken, one thing that you are going to need is one of these. Soldering iron. Soldering iron is used to re-solder wires for various other electronic jobs. Uh, this one is a fairly common type, Antex type, uh, and it's a 25 watt iron, which means it gets hot. A bit like your mum's iron. Uh, we've got a little stand here to we'll put the soldering iron on, because as I say, it gets hot, and you don't want to stick it down and put your hand on it or burn anything else. So that's on there, it's nice and secure. Um, so soldering iron here, it's already heated up. Uh, for the soldering iron, we're going to need the solder which comes in a little roll like this. So we have soldering iron, solder. We're also going to have to get the jack socket out to have a look at it. And for this, we're going to need a screwdriver. Most guitars, or every guitar I've ever come across, uses little crosshead screws, or Phillips type screws. So you really want a Phillips or crosshead type screwdriver, which is one of these. And if you look down here, we can see the crosshead screw. Crosshead screw, crosshead screwdriver, and the two of them fit together. Thus, and you can see this fits in just nicely. Okay, so we have a screwdriver. So we're going to remove this mounting plate. Removing the screw, we also have a small plastic tub. A small plastic tub is to keep the screws in so that you don't lose them. And you know where they are. So two screws, on some guitars this is mounted at the bottom, in this case it's mounted on this called an angled jack socket. So the screws are off, we're now going to lift off the plate and have a little look. And what do we have? Lo and behold, we have a loose wire. This is moving around and over time it's got twisted and one of the wires is snapped off. And in this case, There's a little bit of the wire left where it came off. So, first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to unscrew this because it's very, very loose. So, to do that, because it's loose enough, you should be able to hold up your finger and just turn it. So, that's how bad it is, it's loose. And I'll show you how to tighten it back up once we've made the repair. Again, a little plastic top. Uh, a little piece here, the plastic tool, no major pieces. And there we have, and on the back of the socket you can see there's another little screw, and how this works is the screw on this side and the screw on the outside of this metal plate comes through here, and the two of them are tightened up so that they clamp it into place to stop it moving around. So the problem that we have here is the wires here, and it's usually they're quite short. How they do it in the factory is they make this wire up, then they feed the cable back into the guitar and then solder it into the guitar. But we can't really do that, or we could if we did, but it's going to take a lot of work. So the way around that is to repair it in situ, and where it is. So what we need to do is to hold this, some way of holding this in place so it doesn't move around. Now, to make sure that you don't scratch up the surface of your guitar, you can use a small cloth. So here we have a small cloth. This way I'm going to scratch up the guitar. And it is worth pointing out, if you're going to do this kind of repair, you've got soldering iron and tools, don't do it at your mum's favourite coffee table. She's not going to be very happy with you. So make sure the area you're working in is well lit. And it's, you're doing it on a surface that uh, no one's going to object if you get a little scrape or a scratch on it. So you might want to put down a bath towel or an old towel or a cloth or something like that. Now, we need to hold this in place. Now, a good little dodge is to use a pair of pliers. The pair of pliers are going to be holding this in place while I do the repair job. Now, another thing we can use for your pliers is an elastic band, or in this case, a very large 
hairband. Wrap that around the handle a couple of times thusly until it's nice and tight. And there we have the pair of makeshift clamps. So we're now going to put this here, open it up, place the jack plug in here. And when we hold, it sits nice and still and it's not going to move around. I need to fish this wire out here. Okay, so we're going to have to remake the pull this around so you can see it. This wire is connected. Now, if you look at this, it may be the case that both wires have come off. Now, if I use this screwdriver to point out what I'm doing, if you're not sure which cable is, in this case, this guitar has two separate wires. Usually you get what's called a shielded cable, and this one is actually a bit of a cheap guitar and it doesn't have one. Now, usually in a shielded cable, you've got a kind of a wet metal braid and that goes on to this connection here. You can see that this pin is on this metal plate here. Now this is the earth wire or ground wire. And this corresponds to the big long bit on your jack plug. And the tip of the jack plug comes up here and connects to this one, which is connected to this tab here. And this is the wire that has come off. Give a little tune there. So, first thing we need to do, we're gonna re connect this cable. Now, as you can see, it's plastic there, so there's no wire on this cable, so we're going to have to re-move some of this shielding, this plastic covering on the wire. And to do this, we're going to use these. These are wire strippers. You may not have wire strippers, but at a pinch, you can use a very, very sharp pair of tweezers like this. You have to be fairly sharp. It's a bit more footery and you can grab that, hold the cable and pull it forward and strip the cable like this. But they have to be fairly sharp. But today we're going to use the wire cutters and they work like this. You can see they've got lots of little holes in it and you just find the thickness of the cable that it will work on. Push that one down, just about there, hold it firmly with your hand, pull forward and there we have a nice clean piece of wire. And you see it's always kind of splayed out. So what you do is little twist with your fingers, twist it up until you get to a nice point. Hey, there we go, that's more than plenty. Now the next problem we have is you're going to be resoldered onto this connection here. And you can just see there's a hole, but there's also what's left of the old piece of cable on there, but it's snapped off. So we want to clean that up and remove it as possi if possible. So we're going to use the soldering iron. And you can see that. And we have another gizmo, <coughs> excuse me, which you may or may not have. This is called a solder sucker. Now, if you have one of these, or you can get one of these, and this works by pushing this plunger down and pushing this button, and it releases and on the end here. What this does is it sucks up any excess solder and you push that down when you finish with it and it pushes out any of the old solder. So quite a handy gizmo and how this works is once you've heated the wire up or any excess solder, heat it up with a soldering iron, prime it, once it's warm, push the button and not remove any solder. So there's not much solder on this, I'll give you a little demonstration of the iron. The iron, this is nice and hot, so be careful, you're not burning yourself. If you look at the tip of the iron, it should be nice and shiny. It's called it's tinned. When the iron, iron first heats up, you apply solder just to the end to get a nice shiny surface, which means that the solder will stick to the job and not to the iron. So we prime this, and we're going to heat this up. And just remove this, oh, and it's come off already. There you go, nasty little piece of wire. And on your little shoulder stand, I've got this, which is a little bit of foam, which is wet, damp. And you use that just to wipe the tip of the iron so that it's nice and clean. Now, so we now have a metal tag that we need to reattach this wire to. So you can see that, you can see there's a hole, a nice clear hole for the wire to go through. 
as well as the solder holding it on, this wire has a kind of a mechanical connection. So it goes through that hole. You get the throw through here, and it's secure. And what we can do is we can just fold it over slightly. It was a slightly, and that comes through, and that sticks. So it's got a little bit of a, a mechanical anchorage. It's a bit tricky to see what I'm doing in here. Right, and there we have it. So that's how we're going to do it. Another way to do it is that you can apply a little bit of solder to the wire or tinny it. So if we do that now, again make sure that it's secure when you're doing this with the wire. So we're going to tin this wire, get soldering iron and we get some of our solder. Now the trick to soldering is, the old saying is, you don't heat the solder, you heat the work. And in this case the work is this piece of wire. So you want to heat that piece of wire up, solder on one side, wire on the other side, let it melt and it will flow over. And there we go, put the wire tinned, put it through the hole. You can just hold that there and what you can do is if you so desire is to get a little bit of a twist on it so that the wire is secure. And you can hold the plastic piece with your hand there and just bend that around a little bit so that the wire is now secure. Hold that there. Again, we're just going to supply a little bit of heat to the soldering iron. And there we have it. And if you look around there, we can see the wire is now reconnected. Okay, so that done. Take the clamp out of the way, put that to one side. And we can move this out of the way, put that to one side. And we've got a little bits and pieces. Now, reassemble it, we get our little plastic tub with all our bits in it. Now we know where they are, they're all in one place. Put them to one side, and we get the little bolt that holds it on. I'm going to reattach this. I'm going to move this back a little bit so that there's enough of the socket. If it's up too high, there won't be enough to go through the hole to secure it. So move this back a little bit. Sometimes all the way back. It's not ideal. Come in here. Enough for it to secure it. And now we reattach. Make sure that you put it on the thread, not against the thread. If you're trying to turn it and nothing's happening, it means it's sitting at a squint angle or odd angle, which you can end up ruining it. Okay, so that's a secure finger tight. Now, you may or may not have one of these, which is a little spanner. You can get a proper piece of kit that has got a little handle on it that goes in and tightens this up. I have this little spanner here, which fits normally, but it is a little bit awkward to get it in there because of the angle, because of this thing. And chances are you won't have one of those. So, the way around that is you grip it firmly with your finger on this side, two fingers, and carefully use a pair of these. Sort of long nose pliers if you have them, or something suitable. And it's not the best thing to do, I'm trying not to scratch things up, and just grip it with the pliers, firmly but securely, and give it a little twist. And again, another little twist. There we go, and that's nice and secure. It's not going to go anywhere. Perfect, so we've done a repair, and now it's reassembly. So, pop it back in the hole, make sure the wires are all kind of good and secure. Slot it back down. Again, back to our plastic tub, with all our parts, so we know where they are. And just put your fingers, put one in one hole, just like that, and put the other in the other hole, just like this. See that? Make sure again that you put the screw in straight, not all twisted and piggledy piggledy. Screwdriver again, get it on the screw head, tighten it up, 
a little bit of that. Next one, get that down. Okay, and give it a turn. Don't go crazy with it, just make sure it's snug and secure and it's tight and it's not going to come loose. Again with that one. Give it a little check. There we go, job done. Thanks very much for watching, hope this information was useful for you and we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.